If I wanted to be subjective, I would be a painter and not an architect. In painting, I could express anything I like, but when building buildings, I have to do what is necessary. Not what I like, but what is best for the given thing. I often reject ideas that I used to really like, because when I thought about them, I just had to reject them. Even the smallest emotions can be expressed in painting, but you can't do much with a piece of wood or stone. That's the difference. It is not possible to be completely subjective. The buildings then look comical. I am very skeptical of emotional expressions. I don't trust them, and I don't think they will last long. If you have to build something, you can turn it into a garage, but you can also turn it into a cathedral. All my life I've been thinking about architecture, constantly about what it is like and how we could do it in our time. I'm becoming more and more convinced that architecture is an expression of our civilization. The whole character of the building is very light. That's why I like to use steel when I have to construct a building with a metal structure. Steel is an excellent material. It has strength and elegance. When you build from steel, it gives you a lot of freedom inside. Inside, one can do whatever one wants. One is free. And when it comes to appearance, this freedom does not exist there. When they see a building like that, People always say it's too cold. However, they forget that these buildings require them to believe that there exists a very strong order. But is that what they really want? I'm not entirely sure. People want chaos. I believe that it is possible to use clear elements and thus enrich things. Clear construction in architecture helps me a lot. For me, construction is like logic. It's the best way to do things and express them. There are certain forces that are in conflict with each other. But when one considers things properly, one finds the main forces, the permanent forces. And one finds the superficial forces.
was greatly influenced by the Italian theologian and philosopher Romano Guardini, who wrote, I think that those who characterize this space as empty do not understand themselves, that they do not feel the quiet calm of large untouched areas, the clear vastness of free space, the clear presence of simply shaped things. If they tried to capture their innermost feelings, they would see that the apparent emptiness and coolness of this space actually expresses their innermost being better than the warmth and comfort of so-called cozy living rooms. They want everything filled with shapes, objects, images, just as they hate silence. Have we forgotten what silence is that forms part of speaking just like breath of exhalation? That pious silence is the deepest prayer before God and that the prayer of the word is only possible if the prayer of silence is done away. The same is true for a large space that is not disturbed by division and filled with paintings or ornaments. The silence of these great walls can impart in us the feeling of God's presence. This is not emptiness, this is silence. Let silence be God. Never talk to a client about architecture. Talk to him about his children. That's a good policy. In the vast majority of cases, he will not understand what you want to say about architecture. The architect should be able to tell the client what he wants to hear. Usually, the client does not know what he really wants. People who do not know architecture simply cannot know what is possible and what is not. <laughs> 